Welcome back, listeners, to Sandman Stories Presents, a folklore podcast where I read you to sleep or until the next story. I'm your host, Dustin. Today we are back in the book of Chinese folklore by Mary Hayes Davis and Chao Liang. This is the final two stories in this book. After this, I will be replacing it with a book of stories from the Sioux Nation, though I'm sure I'll bring another Chinese folklore book on soon enough. In the first story, the Rattan and the Rose take pot shots at each other, and in the second story, a professor learns why it is good that watermelons don't grow in trees. Okay, let's begin. The Rattan Vine and the Rose Tree In the Sanwi district, in the garden of a rich merchant, lived a rattan vine and the rose tree. One day the rose tree said to the rattan vine, Rattan, please tell me how you grow so fast. What do you eat that you are able to go anywhere you wish? Nothing seems to hurt you. Nothing seems to stop you, not even stone fences or clay roofs. You have no fear, and there seems to be no danger for you. You care not for the heat of the sun when he is close in the summertime. The rain comes down with a rushing noise from dark places in the heavens, and you are not afraid. The wind blows hard and bends our heads to the earth, but you seem not even to heed it. Then the rattan, with a proud and happy summer face, answered the rose tree. Mrs. Rose Tree, you should be made to leave this garden. I would not allow you to grow here if I were master. I have known you for five or six years. The master put you in the earth and gave you much dirt to feed upon. He gives you water every morning. In the winter time, he gives you a cover and a bed of straw. He trims your branches and serves you in many ways. And yet, you do not grow. You are nine years old now, and only five or six feet tall, while I am only four years old, and my branches measure many thousands of feet. You bear few flowers in the summertime, and that is all you can do. You have no fruit and not many leaves. You stand still in the garden and do nothing useful. You ought to be ashamed. Do you see my branches? Although I have been here for only four years, I now reach over this house and am climbing the fence on the other side. Next year, I shall go and cover up another house. The master likes me in summer because I keep the hot sun from the roof and make his house cool. The children like me, too. Sometimes they climb my arms and swing. And the fence likes me because I cover it so thickly that I protect it from the children and the pigs. The birds build their nests high in my arms, and they like me also. The bugs like me because I give them a home, and they feed upon my leaves so the master knows that I am good for many things. The birds will not go to you because you are so small. They cannot build a nest upon you. The master's wife does not care much for you because you have so many thorns that she finds it hard to gather your flowers. You are pretty, but who cares about that? The fence is high and no one sees you. And so you stand there and do nothing. Then the rose replied, Rattan, with all your boasting, you cannot even stand alone. I can at least do that. I know that I am not large, and the birds do not build their nests with me. I cannot grow so fast as you, but my children are known to the whole great world of mankind, and are called the sweetest of all flowers. Besides, I am independent. I do not lean upon other things. If your house or your fence falls down, where then will be your vain boastful head? I care not what you say of me, whether you think a rose is good or bad, strong or weak. I do not wish to lean on the fence or roof as you do. Some day when the house and the fence grow old, they will fall down, and what will you do then? Soon after this there came a great storm. In Shanwei many houses were partially destroyed, and the fences fell to the ground. The roof of the merchant's house was blown off. The proud rattan vine was broken into many pieces, and his head lay low on the earth. But the rose tree stood firm, and she laughed and said to the rattan, I told you that it was dangerous to lean upon other things, and never to learn how to stand by yourself. I would not trust any house or fence to do my standing for me. I would rather be independent. I will grow all the leaves, stems, and flowers I want, and so I stand here forever. The north wind comes, and I bow my head to the south. Then the south wind comes and opens my beautiful flowers. I am a rose tree, and in my own strength I stand. 
The following new yi zi has been added to this old story. Yi zi meaning China and her people should be like the rose tree. We must rely upon ourselves. We are better students than warriors. Once, when we found ourselves in trouble, we leaned on Japan. Then, when we had trouble with her, Russia told us she would help, but she was much worse and wished to take our land and to make us a people without a country. The End Okay, and story number two, The Melon and the Professor. Wu Jiao was a professor in a large Chinese university and a very proud and learned man. Hundreds of students were under his teaching, and many thousand students honored him. When he went out of his house, five people followed, singing and playing the drum all the way down the street, and eight men carried his chair. At home he had six servants about him. During each meal, thirty dishes were served at his table. The professor was a great man. Through his wisdom and out of his deep knowledge, he explained all questions to the people. One day, Wu Jiao sat in the shade of the tree of his garden. He turned his head and saw a watermelon lying on the ground, nearly covered with its green leaves. Then, seeing the fig tree with its many figs on it, he said, I think the Creator should have made the melon grow on this tree. He touched the tree and said, How strong you are! You could bear larger fruit like the watermelon. And he said to the vine, You, so thin and small, should bear small fruit like the fig. Things are not well ordered. Mistakes are made in creation. Just then a fig dropped from the tree on his nose, and he was a little bruised. Then he said, I was wrong. If the fig tree bore a fruit as large as the watermelon, and dropped on my nose, I think I would be killed. It would be a dangerous tree to all people. I must study more carefully. I know many things and many people, and if I study and think more deeply, it may be that I shall come to know that the Creator's works are perfect. The End I really like the second story more. The first one always feels like there can only be one winner. You know, both roses and rattans are useful, but I did like its allegory of self-reliance for China. The professor learning immediately why watermelons and trees are a bad idea was an excellent way to end the book. And the podcast shout-out is to a personal favorite of mine. Lexitecture, L-E-X-I-T-E-C-T-U-R-E, is two word nerds Ryan and Amy, who pick words and give their etymology and related words. You can also hear the friendship in their voices and the love of words in each discussion. And it's always nice to get a slice of pie, Proto-Indo-European, in a word history. And so if you like them as much as I do, give them a listen, a review, and a rating. And the listener shout-out is to a city that I absolutely love, Chiang Mai, Thailand. Only 3% of my listens from Thailand come from this city, and it might have been because I was there and my podcatcher downloaded my show. Uh, I always listen back to check for problems and see what I can improve. Chiang Mai was once the capital of the Lana Kingdom that ruled what is now northern Thailand and parts of Cambodia and Laos. They had many clashes with the Burmese Empire and had to rebuild some temples after they booted the Burmese Empire from the city. It is a beautiful city with lots of very sweet people and it will always be in my heart. So, Kap Kung Krab and Ratri Sawat. Thank you, and good night.